Hello, today I'm going to be taking a look at the latest I.O. from Cooler Master. It's the Master Liquid ML240 Illusion. So the new Illusion series of AIOs come in two different sizes, 240 and 360 millimeters. Both of these are available in black, while the 240 millimeter version is also available in white. And I've got the white version here. So what's new with the new Illusion series of AIOs? And I think it comes down to two things. There's a change in the aesthetics, but also a number of performance benefits. I think firstly, the most striking thing you're going to notice when you look at this new IIO is the translucent dome design they've decided to use on the pump. The pump the Cooler Master are using in this IIO is their third generation of their dual chamber pump. And this contains a number of performance benefits. They've increased the size of the water chambers in the pump, which should give improved cooling performance. And as well as this, they've made some other modifications that should help reduce the noise. On the radiator, Cooler Master have also made some changes where they've widened the water channels, increasing the cooling surface area. So the previous version of the Master Liquid ML series of AIOs performed incredibly well. There's potential that this one might perform even better. For fans, Cooler Master are using their ML120 Halo dual loop fans, which are great looking fans. And I think the other new feature to point out is the AIO comes with the second generation of their addressable ARGB controller, which works with their Master Plus software. So that's all the new features. Let's go ahead and get this unboxed and installed. The first thing I want to do is to put the brackets onto the pump and these brackets are gonna hold the pump onto the motherboard. The AIO comes with two different brackets. We've got ones for AMD and ones for Intel. I'm going to install this on an Intel motherboard, but the process of attaching the brackets to the pump is exactly the same for AMD. So all we're going to do is set the brackets on top of the pump. There's a little notch here, which is going to help you line things up. And then we're going to go ahead and turn things over and screw it in from the underside. Next, we can go ahead and put our fans on the radiator. Now, importantly, we're going to want the cables coming from the fans coming out towards the back of the case. And then we can go ahead and secure the fans to the radiator using the included thumb screws. Next thing for us to do is to take a look at the cables coming from the fans. So each of the fans has a standard four pin fan connector coming from it. And with them we've got a shorter connector, which is for the RGB. We'll deal with the standard four pin fan connectors first of all. So we're going to want to plug both these fans into our CPU fan header. Cooler Master included double fan splitter cable, which we can go ahead and plug in. And that's going to give us one four pin connector, which is going to go into our CPU fan header. So I'll go ahead and plug this in. The AIO comes with a second cable, which is for the RGB. So we're going to go ahead and plug the shorter wires into this cable. So looking at the cable, we've got an additional RGB connector, and this is for one of the cables coming from our pump head. So this is the connector from our pump head, and obviously I'll plug this in when we installed in the case, but it's much easier just to show you everything connected up on the table. So it's gonna go into here. And then at the end, we've got two different RGB connectors. We've got a standard three pin, five volt addressable connector, which you're gonna use if you've got an ASRock, a Zeus or MSI motherboard. And then we've got a proprietary gigabyte connector, which you're gonna use if you've got a gigabyte motherboard. And you can go ahead and plug these directly into your motherboard to allow your motherboard to control the RGB on both the fans and also on the pump head. The other connector that we have got coming from the pump is a standard three pin fan connector. And you're gonna plug this into the pump fan header on your motherboard. So as we have mentioned, the AIO does come with Cooler Master's second generation ARGB controller. 
So say your motherboard didn't have an ARGB header or for some reason you just want to use Cooler Master software instead of your motherboard software to control your RGB, you can go ahead and use this controller. So I'm going to show you how to set this up as well. So instead of plugging this 3-pin 5-volt addressable ARGB connector, the standard one, not the Gigabyte one, into your motherboard, you can go ahead and plug it directly into your controller. So looking at the controller itself, we can see we've got three channels. They're labelled 1, 2 and 3. So all we need to do is make sure we're lining it up the right way and go ahead and plug it in. And you can see here we've got two additional channels we can plug a further two ARGB connectors into. So looking at the other side of the controller, we've got two connectors. Our controller is obviously going to require power, so we can go ahead and plug this SATA connector in. All we're going to need to do is plug the other end of this into our power supply to power our controller. We're also going to need to connect our controller to our motherboard. So Clear Master include a USB connector, which we can go ahead and plug in. And then all we'll need to do is plug this other end into a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard, download the Master Plus software, and then we're going to be able to use it to control the lighting on our AIO. We're now ready to go ahead and install the backplate for our motherboard. Because I'm using an Intel motherboard, I'm going to use the backplate that comes with our AIO. If you are using an AMD motherboard and you fix the different brackets to your cooler, you're going to go ahead and use your motherboard stock backplate and cooler mounting clips. The backplate does have some double-sided adhesive tape, which is going to help hold the backplate to the back of your motherboard during the installation. As this is just a temporary build, I'm not going to go ahead and use this. So all we need to do is line the backplate up with the back of the motherboard. And then we can go ahead and use these double-sided thumb screws to secure the backplate in place. Next, we just need to add some thermal paste to the CPU, and it's good to see Cutter Master include some with the AIO. I normally just add a pea sized amount to the center of the CPU. Just before we go ahead and install the AIO, we need to remove the plastic protection from the cold plate. Then we can go ahead and lower things down over the back plate. And once things are in place, we can go ahead and secure it with the thumb screws. Now we can go ahead and just tighten up each corner. The reason I've gone ahead and installed the pump first is we're going to need access to these ports at the top of the motherboard for our CPU fan header, our pump header. And if we had the radiator here, these would be blocked. So coming from our I.O., as we've mentioned, we've got two wires. One is a three pin fan connector, which is going to need to go into our pump header. And the other is our RGB connector, which we're going to plug into that triple splitter cable, which can either go into our inaddressable RGB connector on our motherboard or into the included controller. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the pump connector now at the top of the motherboard. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this RGB connector through to the back of the case and we'll plug it in in a minute. And then the excess cable coming from the pump as well, I'm just going to pull it through to the back. Again, for the same reason, just before we go ahead and put our radiator up at the top of the case, I'm going to go and plug in the cables that we need. So we've got our four pin fan connector coming from the fans, which is going to need to go into our CPU fan header. Okay, so that's that plugged in. All I'm going to do is start pulling the excess cables through to the back, which is going to make getting them all out the back later a little bit easier. As well as this, we've got our RGB connector. Again, I'm just going to start pulling that through to the back. Then we can go ahead and bring our radiator up to the top of the case. Again, as we do, just pulling any excess cables through to the back. And then we just need to go ahead and secure this to the top of the case using the short radiator screws. Then at the back of the case, now we can go ahead and plug in the RGB connector coming from our pump back into this triple RGB splitter cable. So as I've mentioned, we can go ahead and plug this into our motherboard. We want to use our motherboard software to control the lighting, but I'm going to show you the new Gen 2 controller. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into channel 1 on the controller. 
So coming from the controller, we've got our two wires, we've got our SATA connector, which I'm going to plug it into one of the SATA cables coming from our power supply. And then the other end is a USB connector, which I'm going to plug into one of the USB 2.0 headers on the bottom of our motherboard. So we'll feed this back through to the front of the case. And then we can go ahead and plug the USB connector into the USB 2.0 header down at the bottom of the motherboard. Another nice feature of this controller is that it is magnetic. So we can go ahead and stick it onto the back of the case. 